Hey, I wanted to encourage you in the power of prayer. Um, I heard some very disturbing news this evening that my son Warren, um, he goes to Chief uh, Moses M Middle School in Moses Lake, Washington, and I just found out that there was a shooter that went to his school yesterday with a pistol and two rounds of ammunition and a... Um, I guess a list, a target list. Um, it, Warren was in first period with this student and um, I'm encouraging you in the power of prayer because yesterday was not a normal day. The night before um, I stayed up um, till very, very late, if not into the morning praying and I would have actually um, slept through the time of which this kid was in Warren's class. And, but I didn't because um, a friend called me um, early in the morning. Actually, it wasn't really that early, but it was early to me considering um, the time change. And then I had stayed up so late the night before. Anyways, so what I wanted to just encourage you is I received a phone call probably just prior to Warren's first period class starting and um, it woke me up and um, which is totally fine. I'm sure this friend will watch this video and it was totally fine. Um, I um, just fell back to or I tried to fall back to sleep right away. And so I, but I couldn't, so I began praying. And when I was praying, I was praying over Warren and I felt really prompted to pray over him. And so I covered him in prayer. And then, um, and I just, I prayed in a way that I don't usually pray. Um, I, the Lord just kind of instructed me in a different kind of prayer, which was interesting, but I just went with it. And now I know why I did, because this kid who went to the, his school with a pistol and two rounds of ammunition had intention on harming, um, I'm assuming other kids and maybe teachers, um, who knows what it is, but I guess he did have a target list. I wanted to just encourage you in the power of prayer and not only in the power of prayer, but also in when you get a nudge to call, call someone, do it, because God could use you to do something that you don't understand or you may un never understand. And um, because in this situation, and I know that um, it was unusual and out of the norm to make a phone call um, at 7 a.m., however, it was exactly what God needed to happen. And I'm not saying that he Warren wouldn't have been protected if he wouldn't have made this phone call, but it protected Warren because I woke up, it provoked me to pray, and I prayed and it covered Warren. And the way in which I prayed, the Holy Spirit just guided me. So I just wanted to encourage you um, in the power of prayer. Warren is in Washington. I'm in California because as you guys know, the court... Um, in my opinion, um, aired in criminally, in my opinion, um, in what they did by giving Brian custody. But that doesn't stop me from praying for them. And it doesn't stop me from praying about what's going to happen when he is released, when, when Warren walks into his calling. And I think this also encouraged me not only in the power of prayer and the power of our friends who the Lord puts on our heart, or on their heart to do something, pray or make a phone call, how important that is. Um, and it is also encouraging to me to know that Warren, in fact, has a huge calling on his life. Um, I know that m both of my kids have a huge calling on their life, and I know that the enemy wants nothing less than to try and destroy him and remove that. And it's not going to happen. This is such, to me, this is confirmation even more that there is such a massive hedge of protection around my kids no matter what spiritually they cannot be touched their life is so secure with god and his hedge of protection over them 
And I just give God all the glory and the praise in this that Warren is safe and that nothing ever happened to him in the first period class because that shooter was in his first period class. And during the day, so he was detained. So the very first period class, the shooter was in there with Warren. He had his pistol and he had two rounds of ammunition and a, um, a list, I guess a target list. And it wasn't until third period that he was detained by police. So I'm sure even the Lord was working in this young man's life. Um, I don't believe that kids 13 years old um, in a normal situation would feel that they need to take a pistol to school and shoot anyone. I don't care how dire the situation is. It's not normal, which means there's something going on. Um, it's either in his home um, or it's in the school or it could be both or it could be outside of the home but something is happening to that child to provoke them to go take the steps that he did and it's sad because reading through the article that i read he the kid is now in juvenile detention and he will probably you know have all these consequences and the therapy that he needs is so much more than Moses Lake <laughs> can offer him. And um, if if there is something that's going on within the school system, within Moses Lake, um, this kid needs much deeper attention. He needs help. And um, my heart and my prayers for him, um, and I ask that you pray for him too. I don't know his name. I'm sure they won't release it because he's a minor. But um, I know me and my mom prayed for this young man um, because you just don't go to those links unless there's something going on that's much deeper. You know, we, we know it could be sexual abuse. It could be physical abuse. Um, it could be that his own mother was taken from him. Um, I mean, who knows, right? You just don't know what can happen or what has happened to provoke a 13-year-old to go to these great lengths. Um, so I encourage you to pray for this young man that's you know, sitting in juvenile hall, um, how lonely, how sad, you know, all of those things. Let's pray off that, let's break it off of him because he probably has a huge calling on his life, just like my kids and just like many kids. Um, the enemy's really trying to take the youth and I say, no, that's not gonna happen. In fact, I'm gonna go on a mission to who are making it a mission that that won't hap that won't happen and to help raise up the youth um, to stand against whatever it is that Satan's trying to do to stop them. Um, they are our future. They're also our warriors. So anyways, God bless you all. Um, thank you for your prayers for my kids because I'm sure it wasn't just my prayer that protected them. It was all of your prayers and um, I'm just so grateful that God sees, he hears us, he sees us, and he uses people around us. Um, and he'll use you like he's used me. He'll use each one of us to work in other people's lives. So I thank you for praying for Warren and praying for Clara. And please continue to pray for them, um, especially Warren right now. I'm sure that um, I'm sure it's affecting him. Unfortunately, I can't even see him. I can't talk to him. So I, as his mother, I can't comfort him. But you know what? God can. In fact, the Holy Spirit can comfort him more than I can. So I'm just praying that um, he is surrounded by God's grace and God's mercy and God's enduring love um, that never fails. And also just covering him in, in hope um for the, for our future so warren will be a mighty king someday i really believe that um, he has a, a huge anointing on his life just like probably this young man that's sitting in juvenile hall right now so um anyways god bless you guys thank you so much for your continued prayers and um we'll see you again